Hey demigods, it's Weiss, and for today's video, I've made a list of top 20 facts you probably forgot about the Riot Inverse. And when I'm talking about the Riot Inverse, I'm talking about Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Heroes of Olympus, Charles of Apollo, and Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. I'm not including the King Chronicles because, like I said in the video, I haven't read those books yet, and because of that, I can't give any facts in that series. Also, I'm giving half of the list in this video, and the rest will follow in another video. Finally, I have to give a major spoiler warning for the series I just mentioned earlier, so there's your warning. And now, let's get started. Number 20. Annabeth used to be taller than Percy. I actually forgot about this detail myself because, for some reason, I always pictured Percy a few inches taller than her, but in the Percy Jackson series, it's revealed that Annabeth was taller than Percy. So in the Heroes of Olympus, Percy does go taller than Annabeth, Percy standing at 6 feet, and Annabeth standing at 5 foot 9. Number 19. Frank is lactose intolerant. We all know that when you're a demigod in the Riot Inverse, you normally get disabilities like ADHD and dyslexia, but for Frank, it was lactose intolerance. It was quite a small detail in The Son of Neptune, when Hazel mentions Dakota drinking too much Kool-Aid, and Frank said, I wish I was ADHD or dyslexic. All they got is lactose intolerance. Number 18. Percy, Piper, and Annabeth are the only ones in the Seven with an alive mortal parent. Jason's mortal parent is his mother, Beryl Grace, and she died in a car accident. Frank's mother, Emily Zhang, died in the war in Afghanistan. Hazel's mother, Marie Leves, died because of Gaia. And Leo's mother, Esperanza Valdez, died because of a fire made by Gaia. And this leaves Percy, Piper, and Annabeth with quite a complete family, with them having both their immortal and their mortal parents. Number 17. Percy made a damn joke in the Mark of Athena. The damn joke started out in the Titan's Curse, when Zoe, Grover, Thalia, and Percy were in the search for Annabeth, and they came across the Hoover Dam. Grover and Thalia proceeded to make jokes like the damn t-shirt and the damn snack bar, and years later, Percy made a damn joke in the Mark of Athena, when the Seven were in Camp Jupiter and were talking about closing the doors of death. Piper compared their situation to a water leaking through a dam, and Percy smiled, saying, We've got a damn hole. Number 16. Magnus Chase was mentioned by Annabeth in The Blood of Olympus. The Blood of Olympus is the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series, and in a chapter, when the Seven are going to the final battle against Gaia, Piper starts up a conversation about their families, and Annabeth says, And my dad's relatives. I haven't thought about them in years. I have an uncle and cousin in Boston, and in Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, it's revealed that Magnus was the cousin, and Randolph Chase was the uncle, because both of them lived in Boston. Number 15. Zoe Nightshade went into the quest in the Titan's Curse, even if she knew she was going to die. Zoe Nightshade was the former lieutenant of the Hunters of Artemis, and she went along with Percy, Grover, and Thalia to find Annabeth and Artemis. We all know that she dies by the end of the Titan's Curse, but it is later revealed that she knew that she was going to die, based on the prophecy the Oracle of Delphi gave her. And here's the prophecy. Five shall go west to the goddess in chains. One shall be lost in the land without rain. The bane of Olympus shows the trail. Campers and hunters combined prevail. The titan's curse must one withstand, and one shall perish by a parent's hand. Zoe's father is Atlas, a titan who fought in the war against the Olympians, and was forced to carry the weight of the sky as a punishment. This punishment is the Titan's curse the prophecy in the book's title was talking about. The last line that says, and one shall perish by a parent's hand, refers to Zoe dying because of Atlas, and Zoe knew this all along, but didn't say anything, because she was determined to save Artemis. Number 14. When Magnus called Annabeth by the end of the Ship of the Dead, Annabeth was crying because of Jason's death. I think I mentioned in a video that Magnus Chase is sort of connected to the Trials of Apollo, and this scene just proves what I'm saying. In the Burning Maze, Lester, Meg, Piper, and Jason needed to get Caligula's shoes, and while doing this, they met Caligula himself. All of them were trapped in tornadoes, and Jason broke all of them free and killed a lot of Pandai in the process. He duels Caligula and tells Apollo, Meg, and Piper to get out of there and remember. However, Caligula managed to kill Jason, stabbing him in the back when Jason fell face first into the floor. When Magnus calls Annabeth after his quest against Loki, 
Annabeth had just heard the news of Jason's death, and according to the Tower of Nero, Annabeth says that she cried herself sick. Number 13. Jason had been in Camp Jupiter since he was three years old. In Camp Jupiter, they burn your godly parents' symbol on your arm and give you a black stripe for each year you've been in camp. In the Heroes of Olympus, Jason was revealed to have 12 stripes, meaning that he had been in Camp Jupiter for 12 years. Also, he was said to be 15 years old at a time, and if you do the math, he had been in Camp Jupiter since he was 3. Number 12 Frank said, If I'm going to burn, it might as well be bright twice. On the night of his birth, Frank was given a piece of firewood and was told that if it burned entirely, Frank would die along with it. And knowing this, Frank has kept his firewood safe and hidden, but he burned the stick twice. The first time, not fully burning it, but the second time, it fully burned. He said this line the first time when he burned the stick to free the god of death Anatus, and the second time when he burned the stick entirely to cause an explosion and to kill Caligula. But during the second time, he added, this is for Jason. And finally, number 11. May Castellan is still making lunch for a son that will never come back. This fact is truly heartbreaking and most of the time forgotten by fans. May Castellan is Luke Castellan's mother, and when Luke was a baby, May decided to become the host of the Oracle of Delphi. Unknown to anyone at the time though, Hades had cursed the Oracle to never move on to another host. And because of this curse, May went insane and saw glimpses of the future and Luke's fate. She would have moments when her eyes became green and suddenly speak weird things, and Luke was frightened of his mother. Also, this was the reason why Luke left home. Ever since then, May was under the impression that Luke would come home one day and she'd make cookies, peanut butter sandwiches, and Kool Aid every single day. And whenever someone actually comes into the house, she'd think it was Luke, but in fact it wasn't. Did you remember all these facts? Let me know in the comments down below. By the way, watch out for the rest of the list in another video that I will be posting soon. See ya!